Great, good to see you. Hey, nice to see you, Keith. It looks like you're in the new digs too, huh? Oh yeah, we're in the new studio, so I'm very happy. I got my man, you know, uh, Sarge here. <laughs> then up top is his buddy Scout, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Scout is up there and just sprinkling kindness, Rick. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. <laughs> That's great, buddy. That's so, great. Yeah, so the topic of this one is going to be, what does service mean to you? Mm. So why don't you start us off? Oh my gosh. Well, I think that in order for me personally to have some meaning in my life, I have to have a mission. And that mission has to have some sort of altruistic component to it. The idea that I'm doing something for something or someone uh, other than myself. And to me, that idea of service allows me to become connected to something bigger and better and then what I am. And so by by going through service for others, it, it, it helps me to realize that I'm part of something that's not only bigger, but it's also a little bit more mysterious and a little bit more magical and very, very powerful. So I guess at the end of the day, um, service uh, for other for me in serving other people is actually <laughs> an act of selfishness because I get so much out of it. How about for you? You, you know, before we get to me, I think what you said was so great. And there's so much research that talks about this feeling of well-being being increased uh, in ways that, you know, we often take for granted or aren't aware of is when we do for others. I mean, we experience more joy, feel more uh, peace and, and uh, love when we're actually doing an act of kindness for other people uh, than if then we are on the receiving end both, you know, increase and support our well-being, but the actual person that does the giving uh, experience more. So, yeah, I, you know, I love what you said about that. You know, there's one thing that you told me a couple of weeks ago, you were unable to make a podcast because you were doing something for the community. Uh, you want to mention that where you go to the river? Oh, well, there's a, I live in Northern Arizona and there's a, you know, there's, a, there are still some beautiful uh, free flowing rivers, um, small ones, creeks, I should call them more than rivers. There's one river called the Verde uh, River, and that um, is, is basically fed from the mountains uh, north of here, the San Francisco Peaks and Flagstaff. And it basically is the water basin for all of the vegetation uh, here in Northern Arizona. Um, there's also an outfit called Friends of the Verde River, and there's also a number of different kayak groups well, all these folks tend to get together in the spring and in the fall and try to work out something that would be um, helpful by division of labor, of uh, keeping and maintaining all of these waterways in a, in a healthy way by keeping trash out, helping to uh, refurb areas that have become worn down, eliminate obstacles like rocks and so forth that have been uh, you know, tossed in by mother nature into the streams and causing could cause some problems for folks. Um, and there's also a, a conservation um, bent of the people who are motivated to do this. And so that service that uh, I'm involved in, very, very minor compared to other people, but very minor, but very fulfilling for me, um, involves just going out to the river and helping and doing some grunt work um, that I think is, is helpful. Plus, I've met a lot of great people. You know, it's a nice it's a nice way to go. Friends of the Verde River. And it's it's a community effort. And like any kind of community effort, I find that there's just so much um, healthy happiness that comes in being part of a community. Yeah, I totally agree, Rick. And I've seen that in so many uh, areas, one being our to be re community mm. in which I've seen it. And you been a part of it for years with our other friends who've given so uh unselfishly you know to you know helping other people and it's done in so many big and small ways 
you know, people maybe going through a transition in their lives where they lose a loved one and the way people rally around them to, you know, help provide food and things like that uh, to, you know, someone's son or daughter is going through a very difficult time and being there to help transport them to, you know, to where they can get the care that they need. Like the community just showed up in so many just incredible ways and sustain each other. I mean, something very simple that the way that we work out uh, in To Be Re is that you're not there for solely yourself. Like oftentimes you are uh, positioned to where you are with a partner and sometimes facing each other. And so you're not looking at what you're doing with your form. You're looking across the way to your partner and you're coaching and correcting their form, which is an act of kindness because you care that you want them to get the most out of the movement. Additionally, you're encouraging them along the way. And so this is just another example of service. I mean, it shows up all over the place. And that's wonderful. At, you know, when you mentioned giving to others or to life itself, whether it be Mother Nature, uh, with the Verde River, which is so magical. I mean, you are helping with the vegetation. You are helping, you know, remove rocks for kayakers who you may never know that come down, you know, the river. And that obstacle that you remove is a great benefit to them. You know, I often think that when I'm on the freeway and I think about how clear the freeway is, that likely there have been blown tires or debris that's been left in the road and somebody's come through and clean that up to make it safe for others. You know, there's just so much that we don't see that we're not aware of that is just such a beautiful contribution. Most recently, Mayo Clinic with uh, some very uh, philanthropic folks have started, you know, been part of a bicycle drive for kids that don't have bicycles. So they have uh, canvassed and encouraged people to enroll in this project of bringing in their old bikes. And then there's this whole crew, and I was a part of it uh, one year at the at the uh, invitation of someone else in which they bring the old bikes and there's this whole system. You drop the bike off, somebody comes to your car, you don't get out, the bike is you know shuttled off to this group that takes care of the chains, another takes care of the gears, another takes care of their replacing seats and parts and tires. And it's like a it's like a, a pit crew, you know, and it's just beautiful. And they're doing this for children that they will never meet, you know, which is just a beautiful thing. So this shows up in so many ways. And what I've found is, is that when I'm being of service, I'm not focused on me. Yeah. And beautiful thing because <laughs> when i'm focused on me man the, the the personal mind is there with its preferences and its expectations and so service is really a well-being practice and and it's one of the easiest things to do and as i've gotten deeper into my practice i have really like seen my definition and my uh demonstration of service began to grow and expand too so at one point, it was something as simple as open a door for people, you know, when they're passing through. Uh, it became, you know, uh, saying thank you for acts of kindness and things like that. The way that it's kind of expanded and graduated now is to serving the moment that's in front of me. So, for example, if someone has some pointed words to me, like what's the best way to serve a moment like that? Not to contribute to the conflict to find a way to de-escalate it, to bring presence to it. You know, I told a story a while back to where uh, a colleague has some very sharp language for me and how I was just present to, I went, I went into it, like, how can I serve this moment? And one thing is not to get defensive and not to come back, you know, and match their fervor. And mm -hmm. so the whole time I'm just being mindful and present to do not get involved. The personal mind is going to have a problem with everything that's getting said, being said. Just let it pass through you. Just let it pass through you. And in doing so, I felt like I was able to serve that moment. There have been a lot of moments that I didn't serve it. <laughs> a lot of them. And so I just think that, you know, as you continue to work on yourself, you continue to to, uh, to practice spirituality. And I think before, I the best definition of spirituality that I've heard was Michael Singer saying, I don't know why they call it religion. And, you know, you why, I mean, why are we call it spirituality? I like to call it working on yourself. And so in working on myself, I found that it becomes easier and easier to serve. You know, when I think about, you know, friends who are upset with their spouse for what they did or didn't do, that's an opportunity to serve that moment. 
that's an opportunity to let go of being upset that what somebody else didn't do. It's an opportunity to raise the moment and what you can do, practice gratitude, how you can contribute. And so I love the idea of service. I'm grateful for my mom who introduced it to me. And I'm grateful for friends like you who helped me really put it into practice. Mm -hmm. Well, Keith, one thing that you just said that I never thought of before, and I'm glad you mentioned it. I always think of service in terms of helping other people, or as you say, disregarding self and being involved in something uh, where you have no hope for um, you know any kind of credit. That that's really the the true definition of service. You're not doing it for an expectation of getting strokes. You're doing it because of the joy of doing it. Um, but I never thought of that concept you mentioned of serving the moment serving the moment that that's a very interesting idea um and it, it fits perfectly with what we said so many times in these podcasts about how there is no future there is no past all you have is this moment and if you are serving the moment then to me that means what's likely to happen is that you're going to be um clean you're going to be present you're going to be awake you're not going to bring all of this baggage uh, about fighting and aggression and all of the rest um, to it and all we have is the present moment. That's our life. That's the living unit of our lives. So being in service to the moment um, for the greatest good, for the greatest many, I think is the way to go. That's a great idea. Wow. Thank you, Rick. Yeah. You know, again, you know, listen to teachers like Michael Singer, Nick Tolley, and some of these, some of these folks show, you know, kind of show the way. And this idea of serving the moment is, is that when I'm present to that, it's amazing how much little conflict occurs when I'm when I'm there, you know, because you have a choice, you know, is what I'm going to say or do going to make it worse? If I close my heart, am I really serving the moment to someone who disagree, who I disagree with or, or well, not I, but my personal mind disagrees with what they're saying? You know, uh, it just it just it just changes everything when you look at that. I think about something as simple as being on the pickleball court and being upset for somebody who's 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 missing the ball or or being, you know, showing up late. Is me being bothered by that serving the moment? Not at all, man. Not at all. And and again, as we said before, it mean it doesn't mean that you become passive and you don't take action. It means that you serve the moment by in, at first starting with acceptance, cultivating inner peace. Because any any action that you take that comes from inner peace will be intelligent action. And so there's just so many ways to like be of service and I'm, I'm learning uh, and just really grateful, you know, for all the opp many opportunities that I get to serve. And there's not one moment that occurs in life, which service can't make it better. I mean, it means just if you think about the things that upset you, that, have, that, that bother the personal mind, if you let go of those, you, you serve the moment. Period. Like, like just letting go of, of those things that are outside of your control, you know, in, in terms of the outside world or people. And, you know, you go through a divorce. Yeah, you can be resentful. Is that serving the moment? You can feel wrong, but is that serving the moment? Is that serving all the people that are impacted by you making this choice of holding on to those things? It's not. And so it's just, it's just the simplest thing that has such an immeasurable impact. And, uh, you know, I was with a friend this morning and he was acknowledging me for, he's, he's known me for over 25 years. And over that time, he was talking about the body of work that I have, you know, been fortunate enough to produce. And he's like, man, Keith, from day one, ever since I met you, you've been like serving other people. You've always put other people before you. And I was about to go and say something like, yeah, you know, Part of that was, man, you know, I'm I'm behind in some other areas of my life, you know, in terms of like where I would could be financially or with retirement. And he stopped me. It was this morning. He stopped me. He said, "No, you're not. Not in the grand, <laughs> not not in the grand scheme of things. You you're not behind. You're so far ahead, Keith. Mm -hmm. It's like you you just you know you just measuring the wrong things. Measuring the wrong and, things. Yeah. Wow. And I was like, wow. You know, and I just thank him for that, you know, helping me change that perspective. So, Rick, I thank you so much, man. I love you. I love you, Keith. Great topic. Yeah, thanks for the insight. Thank you.